وَالَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا Those who have buried the seed of truth deep inside their hearts. Kafar, kafara in Arabic means to disbelieve. But linguistically, kafara means to bury. A kafir in Arabic is actually also a farmer. Don't call a farmer a kafir now. But a kafir originally was a farmer. And they're called a farmer because they bury seeds in the ground. That, that act of farming is called kufr. And the reason a kafir by analogy is called a kafir is because they take the truth, that ruh that Allah put inside them and they bury it with so much dirt that you can't see that light anymore and they can't feel it anymore and thence that's why they become a kafir. And there are some people who have some light left inside them, the light goes in, the light meets the light but he says, no I don't want it, bury it, bury it, bury it. And they're called a kafir. In other words, kafir is not just someone who's not a Muslim in the Quran's language. In our language, we just call any non-Muslim what? Kafir. It's not, that's not the language of the Quran. The Quran will call people kafir when they know the truth and reject it anyway. When they know the truth and they reject it anyway. Then, then the Quran will call them kafir. Otherwise, the Quran will call them jahil. The Quran will call them ghafil. The Quran will call them mushrik. The Qur'an will call them Ahlul Kitab, but it won't call them Kafir. You see? Kafir is a group that knows the truth and buries it anyway. That's the Qur'an's language. Unfortunately, among us, in casual speech, when we think of non-Muslims, we just call everybody what? Kafir. That's, you know, and, and as a mustalah, shari'iya, like, you know, Shari'i, like a, a terminology used by fuqaha and, you know, in fiqh terms and things like that. The word kafir just became synonymous with non-Muslim. So we, be, we just coined it. But that should not influence your study of the Qur'an. The fact of the matter is Allah Azza wa Jal condemns some people as completely hopeless. Completely hopeless. And usually those are the people Allah calls kafir. Or alladhina kafaru. You know? For example, الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا وَصَدُّوا عَنْ سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ أَضَلَّ أَعْمَالَهُمْ Those who disbelieved, uh, Allah wasted their deeds. But then the Prophet would tell us, صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ خَيْرُكُمْ فِي الْجَاهِلِيَةِ خَيْرُكُمْ فِي الْإِسْلَامِ The best of you in Jahiliyyah are the best of you in Islam. How can they be the best in Jahiliyyah and the best in Islam if the best of Jahiliyyah is put to waste? It would only count if they're not kafir, they're just mushrik or ghafil or something else, but they weren't kafir. You know, similarly, in the beginning of Baqarah, Allah says, إِنَّ الَّذِينَ كَفَرُوا سَوَاءٌ عَلَيْهِمْ أَنذَرْتَهُمْ أَمْ لَمْ تُنذِرْهُمْ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ Those who've, had, those who've done kufr, it doesn't matter whether you warn them or not, they're not going to believe. So people who are, who are kafir, there's no point giving them da'wah. There's no point. According to Quran, for a kafir, they won't ever believe. So if somebody does become Muslim, then how is that ayah true? That ayah is only true because those people that became Muslim were never what? They weren't kafir in that sense. They were ghafil, jahil, maybe mutakabbir even. There would be other things, but kafir is a very strong term. Kafir is, قُلْ يَا أَيُّهَا الْكَافِرُونَ لَكُمْ دِينُكُمْ وَلِيَ دِينَ You go your way, I go mine. There's no hope, you know. So, and there's two kinds of kufr. There's outside kufr and inside kufr. Outside kufr is, I don't believe. I don't believe in Islam. I don't believe in God. I don't believe in your prophet. I don't believe in this book. I just believe. Fine. Inside kufr is, I say on the outside that I believe, but on the inside I don't believe. 